just to remind you of some of the functions we covered in week one. Um, we didn't specifically cover this, but we did use the data function to load in the NHANES data set. If you just write in data with parentheses and actually don't tell it anything, don't supply it with an argument inside of the parentheses, you'll actually uh, see a screen that shows all of the data sets that you actually can access and load in. And this will include any data set that was pre-installed with R and also any data set from packages that you've already libraried in. If you had libraried in the NHANES package, then it, you could specifically, you would see NHANES pop up when you use just uh, run the data function with empty parentheses with nothing in it. And if you wanted to actually load in the NHANES data set, you could use data with NHANES in quotes to load in the NHANES package. When you want to install a package, remember that you have to put the name of the package in quotes with the install.packages function. When you want to load a package in, you use the library function and quotes are optional. I tend not to use them. The str function is a way to look at the structure of an object. There is a separate function in all car R called structure, but we actually will never use that. So make sure not to use the structure function, but to use str. The summary function is a way to summarize any type of data structure in R. It's not specific to data frames, so we tend to use it a lot anytime you're working with an object you haven't seen before. Then remember that if you want to access a column of a data frame, if you happen to know the name of the data frame, which is let's say A, and you want the column that's named B, you can use this notation where you use A dollar sign B, which will basically just return to you that one column uh, that contains the uh, elements of B. So if B was the age, this would give you back all of the ages as uh, a vector. This is the old way of doing things. I mention it here because it can come in handy when you're uh, kind of initially working with a data set that you haven't seen before. But for most of what we'll do in tidyverse using the dplyr package, you actually won't have to use the dollar sign pretty much at all. But it's something to be familiar with in case you're reading anyone else's R code. And finally, the C function is how you actually generate a vector or a column. Um, and the key here is it's a way to combine different uh, data elements. So if you were to combine one, two, and three, you would end up with a numeric vector uh, or an integer vector that has uh, three elements in it, one, two, and three. Remember that this has to be a lowercase c. Some of the functions we talked about that help you compute uh, descriptive statistics beyond just using the summary function was that you can directly calculate the mean or the median using the respective functions. Although I don't think we actually explicitly talked about it, there's also an SD function that lets you calculate a standard deviation. I'll be using this term function and argument, and uh, I mentioned that you know this is not a programming course, so I do want to explain just really quickly what I mean when I say the word function and what I mean when I say the word argument. So let's take a look at these two lines of code. Uh, in the first line, I define age as a vector, that's a numeric vector, with the ages 42, 35, NA, which is a missing value, and 59. Then, in order to calculate the mean, I have to tell the mean function to ignore the, MA, uh, the NA values by specifying NA.RM equals true, which effectively removes the missing values before calculating the mean. So in that highlighted line of code, what is the uh, function and what is the argument? So let's take a look at the help function uh, for mean to actually uh, take a uh, look at this in more detail. The name of the function is usually on the top left when you load our documentation for uh, any kind of function or object. In this case, mean is the name of the function, which is not surprising. And if you look at the description, it'll say that mean is the generic function uh, to calculate the arithmetic mean. And then if you look at the list of arguments, uh, which is just below where how you're supposed to use mean is defined, you'll see that there's three arguments that you can supply to the mean function. The first argument is x, the second argument is trim, and the third argument is na.rm. 
X is usually something that people don't specifically name. They don't say mean X equals, although, although you could. So when we calculated the you know, mean of age, we just were able to put in mean age, and we didn't type in mean X equals age, um, although that would be valid. And so X is the first argument of the mean function. Uh, trim is set to zero by default. Trimmed mean basically will lop off the extreme values, um, and you can specify what percentage of values you want to be kind of excluded before calculating the mean. This is a way to remove outliers uh, when those are heavily influencing the mean. So the default is not to remove any of them. And then na.rm is the third argument in the mean function. And so mean is the function, and the three arguments are x, trim, and na.rm. Sometimes it helps to see that in writing, so feel free to take a look at this and absorb it if that helps you out. I mainly put it here because anytime we talk about any function, I'll be talking about the arguments that go to it, and I don't want you to have the vision in your head that we're talking about people arguing. What we really are just talking about is what are the things inside of the parentheses in any given function that you need to give to the function for that function to work. Let's talk about a couple R tips of the day. So although you may have noticed, and, I, and you may have heard me say this, single and double quotes serve the same purpose in R. So data and Haynes with single quotes around it is the same as data and Haynes with double quotes around it. Just make sure not to mix and match. So if you write data and Haynes where it starts with a single quote and ends with a double quote, that code won't work. Also, you'll notice that I tend to use equals uh, in all of my code when I'm assigning things. Um, and so, for example, if I want to make a vector of length 1 called a that has a value 5, I'll write a equals 5. Another way that people do this in R is with the arrow assignment uh, function. So if you use a left arrow, which is less than dash, you can say a equals 5 in that way. The nice thing about the arrow is that if you know the value and you don't know what you want to assign it to until later, you can actually do a right arrow so that it says assign the value 5 to the variable a and do it kind of in reverse order, which would not work if you had written 5 equals a, uh, which would result in error. Uh, you can use any of those three syntaxes when you're uh, working with R, but my preference is to use the equal sign. Uh, so just wanted to let you know that it's fine if you want to use the equal sign or any of the other alternatives. So just to be clear, equal is different than equal equal. A single equals sign is uh, uh, refers to assignment, where you're assigning a value to a variable, and a double equal sign is used for testing equality. So if you wrote a equals equals 5, that's actually a question, where your question is, is a equal to 5? And typically, this will either give you a value of true or false, uh, true if a equals 5, and false if a does not equal 5.